Happening tomorrow, sentencing day for a disgraced upstate New York self-improvement guru. Keith Raniere. The Nexium founder had followers that included actors and millionaires. The actress Allison Mack is out on bail after facing a judge in Brooklyn. Prosecutors say she recruited women into a sex trafficking sorority disguised as a women's empowerment group. <laughs> In Albany in 1998, Nexium offered self-help courses for thousands of dollars. It expanded across the country to Mexico and Canada. In 2015, a secret female-only society was added called DOS or The Vow with masters and slaves. of DOS, prosecutors say, actress Allison Mack. If convicted, both he and Mack could face up to life in prison. Are you glad this is all over? Any comment at all? Any comment? Why do you think you're the judge by Lanieri? Alison Mack was born to American parents in 1982 in West Germany. Her father was an opera singer and her mother a school teacher. After her father finished performing in Germany, they moved to Long Beach, California, where Alison began acting at only four years old. In the 90s, she starred on TV shows besides prominent actors like Eugene Levy, and at age 14, she guest starred on Seventh Heaven, a popular show where the actress Jessica Biel got her start. Allison played a trouble student at school who needed crisis intervention on 7th Heaven. But she wasn't just on TV. Allison appeared in movies like A Private Matter with Sissy Spacek, Unlikely Angel with Dolly Parton, and she was in the sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids titled Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, starring Rick Moranis and a young Mila Kunis. But Allison's biggest role came at age 18, when she was cast as Chloe Sullivan in a superhero series called Smallville. Smallville was a TV show about the early adventures of Kryptonian Clark Kent, played by Tom Welling, and follows him as he learns about his developing superpowers. Allison's character, Chloe, was one of Clark Kent's closest friends who provided operational support to Clark and their team of heroes. Chloe's superpowers were empathic healing and super intelligence. Allison once described Chloe Sullivan's power as, quote, the ability to heal others by taking their pain and making it her own, unquote. In videos on her YouTube channel, Allison would tell fans how the Smallville set had something they jokingly referred to as the alley board. It was a board Allison stood on when next to her co-star Tom Welling that gave her about three to four inches of height, being as Allison is only 5'5 and Welling is nearly a foot taller than her, standing at 6'3. Allison starred on Smallville from 2001 to 2011, and the show's success heightened her career. She was nominated twice for Best Supporting Actress on Television and earned two Teen Choice Awards for Best Sidekick right here beside second year in a row TCA winner choice sidekick Allison Mack. All the fans that voted for me for the Teen Choice, thank you so much. It is so lovely. We are all the way up here in Vancouver and stuck in a soundstage the majority of the year, so the fact that we get to hear the applause through the award shows is so cool and feels so good. So I, I don't know, all actors want to be loved and this is just such a lovely way of feeling that kind of warm embrace from your fans, so I really appreciate it. Allison allegedly amassed a net worth of $7 million and was featured annually at Comic-Con and made media appearances often. But as Allison Mack played the audience favorite and Superman's sidekick, little did she know that one day she would become the sidekick to one of the most nefarious cult leaders in US history, a man named Keith Ranieri. 
While Allison starred in Smallville, her personal life was heating up as well. In the early 2000s, she had a long relationship with the actor Chad Krauchuk, but by this point, Allison had already been involved with a self-help group called Nexium for eight years. Allison was introduced to Nexium in 2006 by her Smallville co-star, Kristen Crook. Smallville was filmed in Vancouver, Canada, and Vancouver was also home to one of Nexium's headquarters. Keith Ranieri learned through the grapevine that Allison would be attending a Nexium workshop that would last an entire weekend. Knowing who she was, Keith put out orders to have his most successful, wealthiest, and highest ranking members fly their private plane to this intensive and never leave Allison's side. Their goal? To charm Allison Mack and make her first intensive special. Cult experts would later call this love bombing. Love bombing is when someone overwhelms you with loving words, actions, and behavior. But unlike real love that comes with no strings attached, love bombing is a manipulation technique used to win over your trust and affection in order to get you to do something. For reasons unknown, Allison wasn't happy with her TV acting career, and according to Nexium Insiders, she asked Keith to make her a great actress again. Allison had no idea that at only 23 years old, the darkest chapter of her life was about to begin. Nexium touted itself as a non-traditional company that taught ethics, human potential, and professional development. Nexium offered courses that told members it could give them the keys to higher consciousness. Nexium claimed that celebrities like Rosario Dawson, Jennifer Aniston, and Gerard Butler took their courses, and even the son of a former Mexican president was a well-known member. Nexium was founded by a man named Keith Ranieri, a man who described himself as a genius and former child prodigy. His followers believed he would change the world and that through his teachings, he could cure all of society's problems. Keith claimed he was so intelligent, the government considered him a threat, and some of his followers believed he could even cure scoliosis, diabetes, and Tourette's. Some believed his energy was so powerful he could impact the weather. Keith Ranieri claimed to have begun speaking in full sentences at the age of one, reading at the age of two, and honed the skills of a concert pianist by age 12. Keith bragged that he had an IQ of 240 and was in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the smartest man alive. He asked his Nexium followers to call him Vanguard a name he picked up from one of his favorite arcade games as a kid, in which the character of the Vanguard increased in power at the destruction of his enemies. Keith told everyone he was a scientist and philosopher and said he had three graduate degrees. Keith also claimed Nexium's courses were better than getting an MBA something he didn't have. The truth is, Keith did play piano, and he played piano well, but he was only in the 1989 Australian edition of the Guinness Book of World Records, and it's reported the IQ test he took was non-standard, unmonitored, and taken at home. Keith also tied for that title with other individuals. His college transcripts that were later revealed showed Keith was on academic probation and his grade point average was a low 2.2. To draw people into Nexium, Keith told people, quote, there's no problem with the planet, it's the stuff we do. You will become that which you want to see in the world, unquote. Keith made people think they were in full control of their lives and that anyone who wanted to complain about problems in their life was what he called being at cause. Being at cause was something Keith taught, claiming that people are responsible for everything in their lives, all successes and failures, all feelings and reactions. Keith taught that a person cannot blame anyone or anything for their suffering, and that there are no victims, only people who have attached negative meaning to an event, person, or thing. Basically, it's a fancy way to victim blame, stating that a victim is partially or fully responsible for the actions of offenders. Keith told those who took his courses that Nexium could save the world by training people to become ethical leaders 
and that he could enlighten people to have more control and understanding about who they really were, thus creating a better world. Keith claimed he was celibate, like a monk, but this would turn out to be anything but true. At best, Keith was a life coach with wild marketing claims. At worst, he was a con man and a sadist, designing a cult and psychologically breaking down his followers while indoctrinating them through his programs. Say, these food bars are really tasty. I didn't know Amway makes food products. Amway offers over 350 different nutrition, personal care, home care, and houseware products. They're more than just a soap company. Well, how come you know so much about Amway? I have my own Amway business. <laughs> you mean you're leaving me? No, my husband and I are building financial independence as part-time Amway distributors. Five minutes, Mr. Hope. Is that opportunity knocking? Discover today's Amway. After college, a young Keith Ranieri joined the multi-level marketing company Amway. Keith later put his Amway knowledge to use by creating his own MLM company called Consumers Byline, which sold discounted groceries and supplements. Consumers Byline generated revenue up to $33 million a year before being shut down in 1997 for operating as a pyramid scheme. Keith and his then girlfriend Tony had a vitamin shop, and it was Tony who first met Nancy Salzman. Nancy said she was a hypnosis expert and could help Tony with her life. But Tony asked Nancy for help with her boyfriend Keith, stating he had grandiose ideas and his hours were becoming erratic again. Nancy listened and said, quote, Oh, that's easy, I can help you. He's a sociopath. Unquote. Keith and Nancy met, and four days later, Nancy, with glazed over eyes, told Tony, quote, You don't know who he is. Unquote. Only one year later, Keith and Nancy launched Nexium. In a court deposition from November of 2000, Nancy Salzman claimed to not only teach hypnosis, but NLP. NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, and it's meant to influence human behavior through touch, tone, and hand movements. NLP is what Tony Robbins claims to use, as many other self-help gurus do too. You may have heard about NLP online as it's used by many in the life coaching community and in the past, NLP has been used by pickup artists and con men. That does not mean everyone who uses NLP is a bad person, but some bad people have used NLP, including Keith Ranieri and Nancy Salzman. Tony Robbins claims he studied NLP under a man named John Grinder, the founder of Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's John Grinder's teachings that Nancy Salzman claimed in a court deposition to have used on everyone she claimed to help. When Nancy was asked in her deposition how she performs NLP techniques, she said, quote, by talking to the person. It's a talking type of therapy that acts as a conscious and unconscious process. It's a model for human behavior change, unquote. In this deposition, Nancy admitted to only having worked for one year as a registered nurse as she was studying and teaching hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming full-time. The father of NLP, John Grinder, wrote in his 1979 book that NLP will, quote, get you almost everything, unquote. But many licensed counselors and psychologists consider NLP to be nothing more than pseudoscience and a tool used for manipulation. Together, Keith and Nancy designed all of Nexium's courses, courses known as ESP, which stood for Executive Success Programs. One five-day ESP intensive could cost new students $10,000, and it wasn't abnormal for each daily session to last 13 hours. From the very first ESP class, new recruits were told they were going to get uncomfortable and that they needed to get out of their comfort zones. Students were then taught how to bow when entering a session space and how to shake hands differently. Nancy Salzman would come on video in these introductory classes and talk about limiting beliefs, and she would tell new recruits that there will be a part of their brain that will try and reject what they're learning and feeling. But Nancy assured them that was normal. She basically said, just go with it. After Nancy was done speaking on video to these new recruits, 
the Nexium coaches facilitating the ESP would ask students to write down what they called a personal emotions inventory, where they attempted to open students up to suggestibility by giving them a worksheet with intrusive questions. Questions such as, what's the thing you most regret in life? What was the most positive relationship in your life? And their questions went on. What was the most negative relationship in your life? Describe the situation. And even, what do you most regret in your life? And who do you love most? This was an attempt to get new students to be vulnerable and share deep things that they might normally reserve and keep to themselves with the Nexium teachers. It was on this fateful night in 2006 in a Vancouver hotel while taking her first ESP that Keith's inner circle honed in on Allison Mack during her first meeting, like prey. Nancy offered to fly Allison on their private plane to New York to meet the Vanguard, something that wasn't done regularly as new members didn't get to meet Keith until completing at least one 16-day intensive at a cost of $7,500. But if there's one thing cult leaders love, it's a high-ranking member with celebrity status who will cast them and their organization into a new spotlight. And this is how Allison became Keith's prized recruit. Hi, um, welcome to my blog. Uh, <laughs> Ready and begin. The very thought of you And I forget to do The little ordinary things That everyone ought to do I'm living in a kind of daydream I'm happy as a king and foolish though it may seem to me. Allison's first meeting with Keith was during one of his late night volleyball games, which he played often with Nexium members several times a week from midnight to 7 a.m. Keith was also known to wake members up in the middle of the night to take long walks with him, where they would talk about whatever Keith had in mind. These late night walks and games were done in an effort to sleep deprive members and lessen their critical thinking abilities. And it was easy to do often because Keith and a large group of Nexium members lived in a suburb in upstate New York called Clifton Park. And many of them even lived together. Getting to go on a midnight walk with Keith was considered an honor. Nexium members were amazed at how little Keith slept and yet still managed to be so productive they claim this had to do with his high intelligence. But unbeknownst to most of them, this was a lie, as Keith was well taken care of during the day by hordes of women in his inner circle who did his errands, laundry, and cooked his food so he could rest, while he made them adhere to a strict 500 calorie a day diet. Allison decided to work with Keith because she wanted to improve her acting. In many of her videos on YouTube, Allison tells her audience how art is her sole passion in life. And in their first meeting, shown here, Keith asked Allison why art is important to her. An exhausted Allison ponders his question and then tells Keith that so much of who she is is wrapped up in art and that film and art brings her so much bliss and joy. Keith tells her, quote, You know you can practice generating an extreme feeling of joy over anything, unquote. He goes on to tell her how Nexium has courses that can help her generate that feeling anytime she wants. And for the first time, but certainly not the last, Keith dismisses Allison's love of art and tells her, quote, What if artistic endeavors were really bogus? What if art is just an excuse for those who couldn't do? Unquote. Keith goes on to tell Allison that her most exciting feelings should be independent of art, and if she feels art is necessary to bring her joy, then that in itself is a self-condemnation. It's obvious Allison starts to get confused, and she nervously laughs and then begins to cry. Keith asks her why she's crying, and she responds, quote, because it's pointing at something I've never thought about, and a part of me is kind of freaked out about accepting this. 
I'm used to that self-condemnation. I'm comfortable with that. If I let go of that belief, then I have to trust that I will be capable of giving myself that feeling and I don't necessarily trust that right now. And so that's scary because I want that feeling, unquote. And as they leave each other, Keith asks Allison, do you hug? To which she replied, quote, I hug and I kiss. Keith, the pretend celibate monk, was known for kissing all female Nexium members on the lips with every hello and goodbye. But it was Allison who initiated this first kiss before she was even a member. When I first came to ESP, I had on the surface something that seemed to be like the perfect life or a pretty good life. Like superficially, materialistically, I was very successful. I had the job, I had the dog, I had the car, I had the boyfriend, I had the blah, 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 the clothes, everything that I thought I needed in order to be okay. And yet, I couldn't stand to be with my family for more than two hours at a time. And the idea of being honest with even my best friend was something that was so far outside the realm of possibility that I just kind of thought you always lived your life inauthentically. Um, and when I came to ESP and I started to do the work in the Coles Lab, do the work in the classes, I started to transform in a way that I never expected. Like I literally didn't know that you could spend time with someone and not be nervous. I literally didn't know that it was possible to have a, a week with your family where you didn't feel like leaving. <laughs> I just thought that that wasn't really possible. I thought it happened in the movies. And now that's my life, that's my reality. I have an experience of my family that is nothing but joy. And it's, it's astounding. To say Allison dived headfirst into Nexium would be an understatement. Allison took as many courses as she could and began moving up the ranks. Just how it's difficult to move up in rank in a multi-level marketing company aka a pyramid scheme, it was difficult to rank up in Nexium. That's because Nexium was a multi-level marketing company, with Keith as its CEO. Nexium's ranking system was called the Stripe Path, and to move up the Stripe Path, you had to do three things. Continue shelling out thousands of dollars to study Nexium's curriculum, recruit others, and get rid of your disintegrations. The rank of Proctor was the first paid rank in Nexium. This rank, along with the rank of Senior Proctor, was where higher ranking members would earn commissions on whoever they recruited, as well as whoever their recruits recruited, and so on down the pyramid. But a Nexium member couldn't become a Senior Proctor without first spending around $1 million on Nexium's teachings. Only one rank past Senior Proctor was the rank of Counselor but members couldn't earn that blue sash rank without first investing around $5 million in Nexium. Before somebody was able to reach the first paid rank of Proctor where they got to be taught by Keith directly, members were made to watch many movies about people who were proud to die for their beliefs and sacrifice themselves for a greater cause. In 2010, Allison Mack made the public announcement she was leaving Smallville as a series regular. But out of respect to her loyal fans, Allison stated she would come back for several episodes in the final season to tie up her character's legacy properly. Allison didn't give a reason for leaving Smallville, but in 2012, she auditioned for a show called Wilfred, starring Elijah Wood. Allison received a recurring role on season two of Wilfred and played the quirky girlfriend. In a 2012 interview about Wilfred with TV Guide, Allison said, quote, I took a year to kind of decide whether or not acting was something I wanted to do anymore and kind of figure out what path I wanted to take and where I was going, unquote. Wilfred would be the last TV role Allison would have, ending in 2014. By this time, Allison had been involved with Nexium for eight years. Nexium had many different companies under its umbrella, and Keith created a company called The Source. The Source was an acting group, and he told Allison he wanted her to lead it. Allison then became an acting coach under Nexium's umbrella, and she even recruited some of her acting students into Nexium through The Source. Allison also joined another Nexium company called Jeunesse. So before Jeunesse, I had 
tons of people around me all the time. I've always been a people person. People used to come visit me in my house and say they were going to Camp Allison because it was like, it was a party. All, everywhere I went, it was a party. Um, but I felt very lonely. And I didn't understand why. That didn't make sense to me. And I imagined the idea of like finding the most wonderful husband and then feeling intimate and, you know, finding that one best friend and then feeling like at ease in my relationships, at least with just one person. I was just looking for one person. Um, and I didn't understand why I couldn't get that. You know, I was so good with people. I was so good in a living room, but I was so bad at intimacy. The format that the Jeunesse Tracks offers with the men and the women and then this consolidated, very intense structure where you are just diving into yourself and understanding how you relate to other people helped me to reveal all of these areas of insecurity, areas of just really basic confusion um, or lack of attention, like things that I had just never thought about or looked at in myself. The Jeunesse Tracks helped me open up and see so that I could start to build a relationship with me and start to be honest with me and then practice being honest with all the people in the tracks with me and then that expanded out and out and out into the rest of my life and now I have the most beautiful friendships with people that go so far beyond anything I could have imagined and I have the most awesome experience with my family and I can say with total truth that I look at men now and I'm not trying to find a future husband and that is very freeing. <laughs> Jeunesse was a women's group with a curriculum for female empowerment that taught people to, quote, inherit their birthright, unquote. Jeunesse claimed to help women understand what it meant to be a woman in a man's world, with emphasis on relationships and sexuality. But under the surface of this group with a feminist facade, Jeunesse was anything but empowering. Keith had members of Jeunesse meet with the men's group and do exercises together, where Keith would teach Jeunesse members how hard it was to be a man and how women were to blame for how they treated men and tempted them sexually. Keith also taught Jeunesse and the men's group about open relationships. Keith believed that men were really polyamorous, while women were monogamous. Keith made these two groups perform militant exercises, such as push-ups, planks, and members weren't allowed to eat, drink, or use the restroom without permission. Keith called these character-building exercises. Female members who talked back or raised objections with the curriculum were humiliated and made to wear masks, a costume with cow udders, and one woman even had to wear a jockstrap. It was around this time that Allison attempted to recruit Emma Watson by tagging her in a few tweets, calling Jeunesse a human development and women's movement, and implying that Emma Watson's humanitarian work would fit in well with the women's group. Only a few years before that, Allison attempted to reach out to Kelly Clarkson in 2013. Allison had been a Nexium member for five years at that point, but neither ever responded to her tweets. Former friends of Allison began to notice her behavior change. A former castmate of Allison's named Michael Rosenbaum recalled on his podcast of a strange incident he had with her while Allison was in Nexium. Michael played Lex Luthor on Smallville, and although he and Allison were friends on set behind the scenes, he hadn't seen her in quite some time. Michael said a few years after Smallville ended, Allison let him know she was in the area and wanted to stop by his place. He hadn't seen Allison in years and said she walked into his house like she owned the place, and he instantly recognized Allison was a different person. Allison walked in with a couple friends Michael didn't know, they all said hi, and then Allison and her friends walked into his kitchen. Not sure what they were doing, Michael followed them in the kitchen where they began opening his cabinets, took his pots and pans out, and began cooking. Michael was stunned and asked what they were doing, to which Allison replied, we're hungry, we're hungry. Michael said after a little while, he felt uncomfortable and said something like, yeah, you guys might wanna leave soon. This made one of Allison's friends violently angry and he started cursing at Michael. Michael then told them all to quote, get the fuck out of my house, unquote. As he uncomfortably tells this story on his podcast, 
Michael says he remembered waiting for Allison to jump in and apologize in an attempt to calm down the situation, because that's something she normally would have done. But she didn't. And as they walked out of his house, Michael said it looked like they were in a zombie-like trance. Members of Jeunesse and the men's group were given what was called readiness drills, where Keith or a higher ranking member would text a man or woman in these two groups and members had to immediately respond with ready. These drills could take place at any time, day or night. If a member didn't respond or was late to reply, they were forced to do self-punishment called penance. Bonnie Peace, a female member of Jeunesse, remembers her penance dictated she be forced to sleep on the floor at home for several nights while her husband slept in the bed. Bonnie was an actress who appeared in Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. She and her husband had met in Nexium, and Bonnie became one of Allison's closest friends. Together, they performed in another Nexium group called Simply Human, which was a live theater group Keith had Allison lead. But Bonnie had had enough of Keith Ranieri, and she knew she had to get out of Nexium, even though her husband, a high-ranking member, chose to stay in the organization at the time. Before defecting in 2017 and losing the only community she had known for several years, Bonnie recalls in the documentary The Vow about being worried for the women in Jeunesse because they were beginning to look unhealthy, and she noticed Allison's backbones were sticking out. Bonnie confronted Allison about her concerns, telling her she looked sick. She knew Allison wasn't eating and told Allison she needed to start eating. That's when Allison replied, quote, Well, Keith is measuring my calories. He says as long as I'm having my period, I'm fine, unquote. Then Allison told Bonnie something truly disturbing. Allison told her she made a lifetime vow to Keith, a vow of devotion. When Bonnie officially left Nexium and told Keith she was leaving because she believed Nexium was built on abuse, obligation, and coercion, and that she could no longer support it, the last thing Keith said to her was, quote, you seem to have a commitment to being a victim, unquote. Now, one of Allison's closest friends was leaving, right when Allison had made a lifetime vow. What Bonnie didn't know was all those years Allison was leading Simply Human, Nexium's live theater group. Keith never paid Allison like he said he would. It was discovered in court documents that in 2016, Allison reached out to Keith via email asking him to be paid as she was going broke. Yes, Allison Mack, the beautiful and talented actress who quit her job and focused solely on Nexium, was now fully dependent on Keith Ranieri, who refused to pay her until she delivered what he wanted most. India Oxenberg. Some former members of Nexium recall Allison being exuberantly happy at all times, while others recall her being like a viper, ready to strike at any minute. Now Allison was about to strike at India. For Janice, I think is the most gratifying thing that I've ever done. Um, it's the most challenging thing I've ever done because it consists of working with a group of people in a way that is totally interdependent, meaning um, we're all working together and no one is ever punished and no one is ever um, told that they're wrong or they're bad. And the most important thing in working on Janus is the relationships in Janus. And I'm not used to that. I'm used to the objective of being met. I'm used to having like strict, hard, fast, deadlines and lots of fear and punishment if I don't get it right. And in working for Jeunesse, there isn't any of that. So it, it comes purely from a place of self-motivation and um, self-direction. And that is really difficult. But I would say that working for Jeunesse is the most satisfying and purposeful thing I've ever done. Behind the scenes of Jeunesse, Keith had formed a private group called DOS, which meant 
master over slave women. Several women of Keith's inner circle, including Allison, were instructed to recruit other women, usually from Jeunesse, and they were instructed to lie to their DOS recruits and say that Keith was not involved in any way with DOS. India recalls Allison telling her about DOS and saying it was, quote, women mentoring women in a very specialized, deep way, and that it would push you past the areas you hadn't yet allowed yourself to grow, unquote. India Oxenberg is the daughter of Hollywood actress Catherine Oxenberg and the granddaughter of royalty, as her grandmother is Princess Elizabeth of Yugoslavia. At age 19, India had chosen Nexium over college, and over the years, as India attempted to rank higher in Nexium, she used up her entire inheritance from her grandfather. Now, in an effort to get paid what Keith owed her, Allison recruited India into DOS, telling India it would help her rank higher in Nexium, how India so desperately wanted. Allison told her DOS recruits that they had to make a lifetime commitment to DOS, which included ultimate obedience to her. When India asked what ultimate obedience meant and if she could still have a boyfriend, Allison replied, you need to ask me permission to do anything in your life. Allison then told India the setup of DOS was a master-slave dynamic. When India told Allison that made her feel uncomfortable, Allison replied that was a totally normal reaction to have and to do it anyway because DOS was about pushing people outside of their comfort zones in an effort to help them grow. Allison told India if it made her feel better to look at it as a mentor-student relationship and promised India that she would always be there for her. India had no idea Keith was at the head of DOS. Exercises started off slow with new DOS recruits, like journaling their deepest fears every day and letting their master read them. India said that Allison was very interested in what made India most vulnerable, including what she was uncomfortable with intimately. Allison referred to it as bonding. But then tasks got more intense and Allison told her slaves to restrict their calories to 500 a day for weight loss and called it a character-building practice for self-restraint. India recalls being told that if she didn't meet the weight requirement, she would be forced to spend 30 days doing intense studying at one of Nexium's headquarters. Then, Allison began to tell India her relationships to her family made her dependent, so she needed to separate herself from them. Allison took it a step further, and told India her relationship with her boyfriend was keeping her from being empowered and getting stronger, and encouraged India to break up with him. Not long after, Allison ordered her slaves to start texting her, good morning, master, and good night, master, every single day. According to the documentary Seduced, Allison texted one of her slaves saying, quote, practice this daily, meditate on me, my face, my constellation, embody me, I will be in your heart forever." Unquote. Allison even told her slaves to figure out what would make life easier for her. Allison would say, everything I do for you, I do for your own benefit. Everything I have you do is for your own good. Allison constantly told her slaves that they needed to lean into fear and discomfort and that, quote, pushing past your comfort zone will make you stronger and more capable in all areas of your life." Unquote. Now, there are many things YouTube considers too graphic for creators to talk about without getting demonetized, but I can tell you, Allison then told her slaves their next assignment was to seduce Keith. And gradually, the assignments became more and more explicit. Eventually, India moved in with Allison, and Allison made India cook and clean for her and do her errands. Then, Allison started punishing her slaves, making them do planks, taking ice-cold showers, and standing barefoot in the snow at 3 a.m. It was a brutal lifestyle for these women, who were not only taking Nexium classes as students, but teaching as Nexium coaches, and also being made to do all the slave tasks assigned to them by their masters in the secret society of DOS. One might ask, Okay, but why would anyone put up with this behavior? Why not just leave? These women couldn't just leave due to the private and disturbing information they handed over to their masters before joining DOS. 
sensitive information called collateral. When Nexium members were asked to join DOS, they were told they couldn't be given all the information about what DOS entailed until they gave the person trying to recruit them something called collateral. Collateral could be things like credit card information, private videos and photos, and written notarized statements with damning information about their family members. Collateral also included rights to financial assets. DOS recruiters made it sound like this collateral was a joke that would never be seen by anyone else or really acted upon, and was just a protective measure so no information about DOS would ever be made public. But they were secretly handing over every woman's collateral to Keith. In February of 2017, in a small courtroom with India as a witness, Allison married an actress named Nikki Klein. Nikki starred in the TV series Battlestar Galactica, but quit the show to follow Keith. India said that Nikki Klein, a Canadian and a devout member of Nexium who also recruited slaves for Keith as a master, needed a U.S. green card as her visa was about to expire and Keith instructed Allison and Nikki to marry so she could stay in the U.S. Nikki Klein denies these allegations. In March of 2017, Allison told her slaves they were going to be branded. The women were told by Allison that it was part of being in the DOS sorority, and this was their way to be reminded of the most important relationship of their life. What the women didn't know was that it was Allison who came up with the idea of the brand after somebody in Keith's inner circle suggested everyone get matching tattoos. The women were told the brand would be a symbol that represented the four elements, and Allison had one of her slaves, who was a doctor, practice on oranges with a cauterizing pen in Allison's bathroom. India asked Allison, are you sure we have to do this? To which Allison replied, yes. The branding ceremony took place in Allison's bedroom, and as each woman was branded, Allison told the women to repeat the words, quote, feel the pain, feel the love, unquote. Each branding session lasted about 30 minutes. Everything came to a head only seven months later in October of 2017, when the New York Times released a damning article with ex-Nexium members who spoke out, showing the brand and calling Nexium a sex cult. Sarah Edmondson, one of Nexium's defectors who also had been in DOS, did a tell-all for the article, which included sharing how DOS members had to give collateral. Sarah became outraged and left Nexium when she found out that the brand on her hip wasn't a symbol of the elements, but were Keith's initials. The symbol, when turned another way, also contained the initials of Allison Mack. A media firestorm was brewing. Keith and his inner circle attempted to deny the allegations and sue any defectors who spoke out, but it was too late. Too much damning evidence had been released, and after having ignored the requests of ex-members for years to step in and do something about Nexium, the FBI finally got involved and opened an investigation. Only one month after the New York Times article was released, Keith fled to Mexico in November of 2017. Allison tried to lay low and hardly left her apartment. India recalls Allison becoming paranoid at people watching her or the media finding her. By spring of 2018, lonely in a Mexican villa that cost $10,000 a week to rent, Keith had his inner circle of top DOS women fly to Mexico for what he called a recommitment ceremony, where they would partake in a... (coughs) group adult act, if you know what I mean. 
Alice and Mac and Nikki Klein attended, and it would be Nikki who accidentally exposed Keith's whereabouts, alerting the FBI who had been privately monitoring her and the other high-ranking DOS women who were close to Keith. Nikki had taken to Instagram and posted a picture while in Puerto Vallarta, a picture the FBI was able to geotag. This led them straight to Keith, where the Mexican Federal Police surrounded Keith's villa with guns drawn and pointed at several members of Keith's inner circle, only to find the smartest man in the world, the classical pianist and his holiness who could impact the weather, the one and only vanguard, hiding in a walk-in closet. This video shows the exact moment Allison watched Keith be taken away by Mexican police, while Nikki was the one recording. Let's go in the car. We can, we're going to follow them. Get out of the way. Huh? Lauren's coming. Let's go, you guys. Allison fled back to New York and once again tried to lay low. But on April 20th of 2018, FBI agents surrounded her apartment and arrested Allison Mack. At Allison's first hearing in a Brooklyn courtroom, she pled not guilty, but she would later change her tune. You see, while Allison was placed on house arrest and released on bail only to her parents who she had to live with, Allison asked India to pack up her apartment and place her items in storage something she may eventually have regretted doing. Because while packing up her apartment, India came across flash drives full of photographs and video of Keith with his inner circle of women, including the moment when he instructed them how DOS should be created and informed them they would become masters while he would be the grandmaster of DOS. Also found on these flash drives was all the collateral, spreadsheets, and recordings from secret meetings. It's believed that around 150 women were recruited into DOS, and it was later discovered Keith planned to have his inner circle and the recruits recruit thousands of women who he planned to obtain collateral from. He then wanted some of those women to run for different offices in government. Keith was a madman, a user and a controller, and he wanted to control the world. India gave the flash drives to police and spent months with prosecutors, going through hours and hours of the flash drive's content and identifying every detail for them, which prosecutors ultimately used against Keith in court, where he pled not guilty. Nancy Salzman, the president of Nexium, who used NLP and hypnosis on every member, was also arrested. At her home, police found hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. You know, most men are from Mars, Clark. This so morning, Smallville actress Allison Mack is making headlines, but not for a new role. Were you involved in a sex role? Her lawyer is now working with federal prosecutors to cut a deal in a sex trafficking case. According to court documents, Mack lured unsuspecting women into a secret sisterhood connected to a self-improvement organization known as Nexium. Mack and her lawyers did not comment as she left court. Mack's lawyers are hoping to avoid a trial, and earlier this month, Ranieri's lawyers denied he'd committed any crime. If convicted, both he and Mack could face up to life in prison. Such a disturbing story. It's complicated. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Morgan. Morgan. Thank you. Allison later changed her tune and pled guilty to racketeering and racketeering conspiracy charges. On June 30th of 2021, Allison Mack was sentenced to three years in prison. It was recommended Allison receive anywhere from 14 to 17 years in prison, but prosecutors asked the judge to give her below the recommended range because of what they called substantial assistance given to them by Allison that helped convict Keith. Allison told the court she now renounces Keith Ranieri and all his teachings. The judge told Allison he faulted her for using her celebrity status to recruit others for Keith's twisted desires. The judge went on to say, quote, you abuse this position of power to persuade and pressure women to join DOS. 
You capitalized on your celebrity and these individuals' eagerness to be close to you, told them you were recruiting them for a women's empowerment sorority, and misrepresented and obscured fundamental facts about the organization and the conditions of membership. You told them that Keith Ranieri was not involved. You did not tell them that they would be required to engage in sexual conduct. You required your slaves to provide collateral, both as a price of admission and on a continuing basis in order to ensure their obedience and secrecy. You demanded that these women give you the keys to the most intimate, personal, and valuable parts of themselves so that you could maintain power over them and have leverage to direct them to do anything you wanted." Unquote. The judge also told Allison he didn't doubt she was also manipulated and felt captive by Keith as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem right now with society is society doesn't, it's not self-reflective. Because we don't have a strong um, community structure, a strong national structure, and down to the strong family structure and individual structure, these things are not reflective of really a specific type of morality. Hmm. You question most people, and in some of uh, our educational programs, you know, one of the modules is good and bad. Hmm. And a lot of people say, oh, this is good, this is bad, but they don't have a real definition for it. And when they're put to the task, suddenly they realize, well, the reason why I think it's good is because I thought it was good, and because I thought it was good, I thought it was good, and I was told it was good, and I thought it was good. But is it good? I'm not sure it's good. <laughs> and if I'd heard that from someone else, I might have been told it was bad, and thought it was bad, and believed it was bad, and da 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 And we find that we have this programming mm -hmm. And has nothing much to do with our experience in life other than it has been dictated to us. Mm -hmm. Society in itself, if it continues the way it's going, will end up where it's headed, <laughs> as they say. And it's sort of a, almost as if we're along for the ride. Yeah. But humans have the capacity to actually sit and think about where we want it to be. Think about how we would like it to change. Mm -hmm. And that contemplation has to be something that becomes understood in society. Hmm. That family, that people understand it, families understand it, communities understand it, and that the different ethical issues that come up are discussed. I believe, and I uh, believe this for a while, that's why we have a specific ethicist curriculum. I think that being an ethicist will be as much of a, a foundation to uh, society as being a business person. During Keith Ranieri's trial, Sarah Edmondson's branding video was leaked to the Mexican press, where Keith had many well-established Nexium contacts. It's unclear who released the collateral and how. But victims have stated they're very worried about where their own collateral might be, and their worries are justified. Several members of Keith's inner circle, including Allison's ex-wife, Nikki Klein, who she divorced in December of 2020, are still defenders of Keith, Doss, and at the time of this recording, seem to be in cult-like groups themselves. Along with a few other Nexium members, Nikki Klein spent an hour every night for 30 days straight dancing outside the prison where Keith was being held before sentencing, just so he could look down on them from his prison window in hopes to lift his spirits. The Nexium group claimed they were dancing outside the prison to support the Black Lives Matter movement and prison reform, but they were soon exposed. We have a friend who is incarcerated here. He's been here since March 2018. As you do with people that you've known for a long time, you have inside jokes. And one of my party tricks is doing a moonwalk. So I did a moonwalk and a bunch of guys started banging on their windows. Um, so we we're like, oh, that, that's probably fun for them to see. It's probably not every day that they, that they see that. And um, it, it evolved 
to, to turning on the car stereo and dancing. You know, I took classes for, for many years with Executive Success Programs, which is uh, affiliated with Nexium. I think what's really sad is that we're out here doing something really good um, that is helping a lot of people. And people can't get past this idea that we were in something called a sex cult, which I don't even know what that is. I certainly was never part of a sex cult. Many women in Nexium, including Allison and Nikki allegedly, were promised a baby by Keith, who never delivered. In fact, only two women have ever had a baby with Keith, and one of those women went into hiding. Keith forced abortions on his inner circle, but due to only being allowed to eat 500 calories a day, one woman who had his baby didn't realize she was pregnant until she was already eight months along. Catherine Oxenberg, who in an attempt to save her daughter by using her celebrity to call out Nexium and Keith Raniere in multiple media appearances, said her life has been threatened and she was told to never step foot in Mexico. This case set a precedent for coercive control in the United States. Coercive control is an act or pattern of assault, threats, humiliation, and intimidation or other abuse that is used to harm, punish, or frighten a victim. According to womensaid.org, coercive control creates invisible chains and a sense of fear that pervades all elements of a victim's life. At the time of this recording, the U.S. has no federal laws defining coercive control, unlike other developed countries such as UK. I remember watching an episode of Scientology in the Aftermath and hearing Leah Remini reveal that the Church of Scientology desperately wanted her to recruit other celebrities, including her co-star, Kevin James, who played the lead role on the show King of Queens. The Church of Scientology denies this, and Remini didn't feel comfortable recruiting James, who was Catholic. But many castmates of Smallville recall Allison attempting to recruit them by inviting them to take Nexium courses. Cults love to pursue people with fame, money, and or large networks, as this helps legitimize their organization. Nexium called itself a self-help company and spoke to people's ideology that the world could be made a better place if they could first work on themselves. Allison joined Nexium to become a better actress and find self-fulfillment, but she became Keith's prey. 12 years later, she left Nexium with no career in debt, as a victim and a perpetrator, and in prison. At her sentencing, Allison apologized to the people she harmed by her actions and said, quote, I am sorry to those of you that I brought into Nexium. I am sorry I ever exposed you to the nefarious and emotionally abusive schemes of a twisted man, unquote. This has been the rise and fall of Allison Mack. Nexium was a very large cult with a lot of different organizations and key players, many that I didn't have the time to cover in this. And if you're interested in a more detailed account of Nexium, including the shocking facts I couldn't discuss on YouTube without getting demonetized, I highly recommend the documentaries Seduced, which was co-produced by India Oxenberg and gives her account of Nexium as well as The Lost Women of Nexium, which features journalist Frank Parletto, who was a former publicist for Nexium. This one was riveting, and in true crime fashion, I could not look away from the screen. Last but not least, The Vow, which has a lot of private insider footage of Nexium's day-to-day -day activities and events, and features Sarah Edmondson, Bonnie Peace, as well as many other high-ranking members of Nexium. 
If you are a fan of cults, scams, and cautionary tales, be sure to like and subscribe so more content like this is recommended to you. Until next time, my name is Josie. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm living in a kind of daydream. I'm happy as a king and foolish, though it may seem to me that's everything. The mere idea of you, the longing here for you, you'll never know how slow the moments go till I'm near to you. I see your face in every flower, your eyes and stars above. It's just the thought of you, the very thought of you, my